So um, we're going to go a little long um, so j just to make sure that we hit everything we want to hit. Um, the next section, uh, the second to last section before we talk about the future of AI and is about responsible AI. And um, this is such a critical question because we know that there are risks about legal and ethical complications. There's risks about hallucination and inaccurate information. Uh, there are risks around bias and having uh, biased uh, data sets uh, leading to biased results, and that that bias, uh, like so much in life, is is built in and, and structural. Uh, so it's not so much about uh, eliminating bias, but mitigating it. Um, and so I'd love to hear about Microsoft's tools and perspectives on responsible use of uh, AI when it comes to business. Absolutely. Let me share a couple of slides on you know our responsible AI policies and how we um, you know think about the space. And like you said, it's a very, very important topic uh, you know for Microsoft. And so when we build these models, when we build these uh, capabilities, um, whether it's chat GPT or any of the other AI services that I talked about, we have an office of responsible AI that looks at it at a much broader level on how can we make sure that we are grounded on these six principles that we have. Making sure privacy and security is a key. Like you said, inclusiveness, right? Whether it's you know making sure that data is uh, used in such a way that there is no bias as much as possible when we are building some of these capabilities in-house. Making sure that we have tools that can let you provide those capabilities around accountability of who's accountable if something goes wrong in these models. Transparency, being able to go in and sort of explain some of the you know, model assessments or the model outputs. Um, and then fairness. So we have actually a framework called Fair Learn that is open source uh, that you can use when you're building these custom models yourselves to assess for model fairness. And then finally, reliability and safety. So those are the six grounding principles that we have from a responsible AI standpoint. Having said that, responsible AI is not like one individual thing. It's not a product that somebody can say, oh, go deploy it and you're responsible. All of a sudden, as you know, it's, it's a set of tools and processes along with governance, rules, uh, and, on, and then we need to have education where we are training people that are building these technologies and using these tools so that they can adopt those practices into their application. So there's lots of building blocks that we provide to enact these principles, but it's a shared responsibility of all of us to build these tools in a responsible manner. Now, for ChatGPT specifically, since that's sort of like the focus of today's discussion, we are doing certain things on top of the open AI models that are in the chat uh, in the public version. So when we bring this into Azure, we are also doing something called as content moderation on top of the base responses and the inputs that you send to the model. So for example, let's say you ask a question to the chat GPT UI or the API and it generates a response. Every single question and every single response actually goes through an other AI filter that we have that checks for content safety. So if there's abusive language in that uh, con a question that you're sending, there is harmful profanity, vulgar language, and those sorts of things, we will actually block the model from responding with it. We will actually create an error saying, you know, this is uh, in violation of the responsible AI policy. And then we can work with the customers to you know, make sure that we are giving them uh, capabilities to go and uh, look at that information or the people that may have sent that information so that they can um, you know, take some action on top of that. And then you can also customize it even further and uh, apply your own specific you know, enterprise rules. But there's lots of those uh, responsible AI principles already part of the Azure OpenAI implementation of the chat GPT models as well. So a couple of those things. And then we also, of course, you know, give you these tool sets. So we have our Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform that has a number of different tools that you could use to, uh, you know, think about responsible AI. So there's a responsible AI dashboard that is actually available, where if you have models deployed, you can, you know, quickly go and check for fairness using that fair learn framework I talked about, where let's say you are building an application that's administering loans uh, for a certain section of the community, you want to make sure that it's not biased where, you know, more loans are getting approved for a certain uh, racial population versus another, et cetera. So those sorts of analysis you can do with some of the responsible AI tools that we have in place. So I'll, I'll pause there, Dan, just to make sure that it um, explains your, um, the concept better. Yeah, absolutely. Well, my, I'm going to ask a question here, which is, um, you know, as a, 
as someone who was born in India, um, as a person of color, uh, I would love for you to just reflect on your perspective on bias in AI as it relates to developing versus developed countries and people with skin colors other than white. Uh, I, I also, I know you're not a woman, but I would love for you to also address your perspective on the fact that most AI researchers are white men in US and Europe. And I think you're kind of uniquely qualified as somebody who um, you know, comes from another country, uh, who comes from a part of the world that's sometimes called the developing world, um, to just provide your per personal perspective or, or uh, on that topic. Yeah, great question. I think when we think about diversity in general, you know, there is a lot of different aspects to consider, like you said, gender, race, ethnicity, it's a lot of different things, right? Whether, you know, you are rich, poor. So there's a lot of different things to think about. And you're absolutely right. When we're building these models, it is super important, not just that data set is diverse, because that's a starting point, right? Uh, these models learn from data. And the data needs to be diverse. But at the same time, who's providing the data is all of us humans. So, and, and at Microsoft, you know, we have a big initiative around diversity and inclusion, where whether it's part of our hiring process, whether it's part of like all of these different teams that we have in place, we want to have that uh, diversity so that when we are even building these systems, you know, those different perspectives come into play. And so you're absolutely right. I mean, that's a super important responsible task that we all have in front of our hands. Um, and the fact that, you know, a lot of these systems are being built by, you know, maybe not uh, by, you know, certain countries, like you said in your example, but I think the key is to have that diverse um, engineering organization from a Microsoft standpoint so that those factors are considered, uh, you know, when building these models. So all we are doing right now is to make that, more of a shared responsibility where tools, process, et cetera, are available for you to think about those things. But it is a super important question that I don't have a simple answer to, except saying that diversity is so important, especially when you're building these AI systems, because otherwise, you know, it is garbage in, garbage out, right? The data that you're giving it is what it's gonna come out with. And so you have to make sure that that is also incorporated in those um, capabilities. Thank you for that. You know, last week we looked at an image generated by Midjourney of a dog with a cape. And the dog looked a lot like a golden retriever. And the reason why is probably because the data set that it was trained on had a preponderance of golden retrievers because it's one of the most popular breeds and it's the one that it had the most images of. And so if you take out the politics of this and you just think more like in a cold factual sense there are just more pictures of certain types of dogs than others and so when you tell them to create an image of a dog it'll create a picture of a golden retriever or a spaniel and not of a um a poodle which might be your favorite dog and so it, it's not about being woke or politics, it's about a reality of a certain structural bias in the data that we train on. And the richer you are, the more likely you are to have created content that can then get trained on. So Wikipedia has a bias towards people who have more time and money, uh, and therefore those stories are gonna be more built out. And then when you train on Wikipedia, those biases, those structural biases will be reflected around socioeconomics, uh, around countries of origin, and yes, around race, ethnicity, and gender. So we're not trying to be controversial here. We're not trying to be political. We're trying to recognize that these are inherent limitations and guardrails around them, and you just need to mitigate for them. You know, you need to, and, and the best example of this, of course, is facial recognition, which has very well-known and well-understood biases against people of color.